My name is Fatima Zaman, and I am a counter-extremist. I'll tell you what that means in just a second. But first, I'd like to tell you how I got here. On Thursday, 7th July 2005, I found myself in the wrong place at the wrong time. That day, I witnessed the most devastating terrorist attacks to ever face the United Kingdom. It was a normal day. I had got up and gone to school. I was sitting in class when I heard the loudest roar. Then came the sirens, repetitive, blaring, and deafening. Then came the silence. Sitting less than a few hundred meters from the blast, I was yet to comprehend what had happened. And as I watched the frenzy unfold around me, I realized London had been bombed. I had just seen terror at its peak, a direct attack on my community. In that moment, I saw what hate, anger, and violence can do when materialized inside a man-made contraption, a bomb. Never again, I said to myself. 7-7 was the first time violent extremism invaded my life. It scarred me, it affected me, and it formed the basis of every choice I have made in my formative years. Earlier, I told you what I do for a living. I'm a living, breathing counter-extremist. I became an activist not out of choice, but out of necessity. In almost every corner of East London, I heard radical voices. I saw violence and I saw hatred. I saw my community divided, cohesion disappear, and pave the way for a type of populism that seems to make reconciliation impossible. And so I decided it was my duty to take action. I was compelled to act for the sake of my faith, for the sake of my community, and for the sake of my country. While 7-7 was the event that tore my community apart, it is also the catalyst for all of my work. Thirteen years from the attacks, my work seeks to bring young people's involvement in violent extremism to an end. Now, de-radicalization isn't an exact science, but if I had to summarize it, I'd say it comes down to three Ps. Proximity, partnerships, and passion. Let us begin with proximity. And I don't mean that in the geographic sense. We've already learned over the last two days that communities can be both local and global, and that place is simply one aspect of human connectivity. In a similar vein, my approach to de-radicalization is based on peer-to-peer -peer engagement, that I am closer to my peers in terms of age, culture, and creed, that I may be able to help them desist from engaging with extremist rhetoric. In 2016, I helped launch an initiative called Extremely Together. Touring communities across the UK, I have worked to disengage vulnerable young men and women from extreme violence. I've developed and delivered training programs that helps deconstruct and debate issues of debate identity, build resilience within communities, and strengthen the resolve of individuals to challenge and dispel extremist propaganda. This brings me to the next P, partnerships. Any meaningful attempt to bring someone back from the grips of terror can only be achieved if we understand their grievances. Often, validating a grievance is a simple yet powerful act of understanding grievance and empathy. Every time I work with a young woman who's willing to perpetrate violence, I know she is harboring a feeling of frustration a genuine feeling of anger that, left unchecked, has been exploited by extremist groups, where she is left to feel her only choice in life is extreme violence. Now, I know this because I felt the exact same anger when extremists attacked my home. By understanding grievances and debunking the prestige that extremists attach to violence, I am able to support her recovery out of radicalization. I'm able to radically include her in our community. It is passion that I come on to next. And it is passion which has allowed me to rebuild my community by relying on the power of ordinary people to do some of the most extraordinary things. My work has shown me 
that when you combine the resourcefulness of people with the power of place, you can rapidly remedy the root causes of violent extremism. And this isn't because I figured out the key to de-radicalization, although I hope. Rather, my approach is more universal. It can be applied to education, reformative justice, and social advocacy. So next time you're troubleshooting a crisis, take a moment to think and ask yourself, how can I influence my proximity, enhance my partnerships, and use my passion to deconstruct the silos that exist within different groups of people? Sometimes you need to be in the right place at the right time to truly realize your position in this world. The factors that converged on 7-7 have allowed me to see what was wrong, to go on and build what is strong. It is often uncommon hope and uncommon stories in the most uncommon of places that have the power to change the world. And so as I close, I leave you with a sentiment. My former mentor, the late Kofi Annan, would often tell me, if not now, then when? If not us, then who? And if not here, then where? Thank you very much.